Trinidad's new top cop gives the public a direct line to him to report crime. And in sports, Barbados and Guyana in winner's row again in the regional under-19 one-day championships. I'm Ricardo Roberts and this is Caribbean in 10 for Tuesday, August 21st. I'll be back with the details after the break. Trinidad Tobago's Commissioner of Police Gary Griffith has set up a hotline for members of the public who want to share information on crime or criminals with him. The hotline is a direct line to him and is strictly confidential. Griffith, who officially took up his duties last week, broke the news on TV6 when he appeared on the morning edition program. Nisa John Mohammed has the details. Temporary measure, Griffith says, was implemented until a permanent system can be installed at police stations across the country. But until such time, members of the public can text or WhatsApp the hotline with their information, which will go directly to the top cop. He is assuring persons that they can now give information to him without any fear of reprisal. People will say, listen, we all know who the criminals are, but we are afraid. Now you have no, the commissioner of police, you are giving me the information directly. Let me deal with it. If you do not trust anyone, trust me. Commissioner Griffith says that the aim of this initiative is regaining public trust and confidence in the police service. I have to find avenues to go after the hardened criminals. And if it is at the public, that becomes the catalyst towards information being fed to the police. Let me be the conduit. Use me. Until, but however, we intend, it is not it is a stopgap measure, we intend to deal with the problem you spoke about, the leaks and, and finding ways to ensure that the public can pass information without fear of reprisal. And he predicts a positive results with this new hotline. Human rights group Rights Bahamas says plans by the government to remove shanty towns where many Haitian migrants live constitutes a gross violation of people's fundamental human rights under the Constitution. It insists that government does not have the right to force those people to live or to leave their close-knit communities built over generations. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, speaking at a church service on Sunday, said it was unjust and unfair to allow the shanty towns to remain, especially given the social and other problems often found in these areas. He said it is a moral imperative for the country to remove them. But Rights Bahamas said it was taken aback by the level of hypocrisy in the Prime Minister's comments. And it says there is no such thing as a comprehensive, careful and compassionate way to forcibly evict someone from their home and relocate them against their will. It said, quote, the government can try to sugarcoat this matter all it likes. It will not change the fact that what they are seeking to do it constitutes a gross violation of people's fundamental rights under the Constitution. End quote. Guyana's President David Granger is pleading with teachers not to go ahead with their planned strike. Teachers are demanding pay increases, but Granger insists that although the government values the service of teachers, it simply cannot afford to pay more money. Following talks with Education Minister Nicolette Henry last Thursday, President of the Guyana Teachers Union Mark Light said the union is maintaining its position and that teachers will start industrial action from August 27. The government is holding firm to its position to offer 700 million Guyana dollars to cover across the board increases, but the union is pressing for a 40% wage hike for teachers. 
Jamaica's agriculture sector has recorded 10% growth in the second quarter of the year. The Planning Institute of Jamaica says the improvement was helped by increases in the production of sugar condiments, fruits and vegetables, but there were decreases in cocoa and coffee production. Increases a major bounce back for the sector when compared with the same period last year due to adverse weather conditions. Among the top contributors are a 44% increase in sugar production, 40% for condiments, 27.6% for fruits, and 21% for vegetables. All these fall under the main areas of traditional export, other agricultural crops, and animal farming. The figures were released by the Planning Institute of Jamaica at its quarterly press briefing on Thursday. These increases outweigh the impact of declines recorded for both coffee production, down 16.3%, and cocoa production down 45.8%. Coffee production was negatively impacted by the coffee leaf rust disease, while cocoa production was stymied due to the outbreak of the frosty pod cocoa disease. Stay with us, your mid this port is next. It's not cooked all the way through, it's just seared. I mean, I just cooked it on all four sides and even the ends. And I'm gonna put that right there and I just want to get my heat back on and I'm going to continue cooking in the pan. I'm like the, the king of one pan, okay? Uh, it's not going to infuse any other flavors that I don't want in the dish because it's all the same. Her passion for what she believes is unmatched. So you could, I wanted to get to the point where you can shake me off that perfect piece. A book off, radio host, philanthropist, and motivational speaker. And I said, I'm going to write you a check for 10000 which I'm not. <laughs> Spirit, soul, and body. Get some help through the transition. I'm Karita D, and you're listening to Girlfriend Get a Life. Welcome back. It's now time for sport. West Indies under-19s opener Cheyenne Braffitt stroked a half-century to power Barbados to the second win of the regional under-19 one-day championships, while Guyana also remained unbeaten in the third round of matches yesterday. Playing at the Arnosville Stadium, Barbados chased down 154 to dispose of the previously unbeaten Whitwood Islands by seven wickets, with Braffitt stroking an unbeaten 73. Earlier fast bowler Matthew Ford ripped through the windwards with a spell of 5 for 38 to send them tumbling for 153 all out in the 44th over. At Cumberland, another Wendy's under-19 star produced the goods as Guyana marched to a five-wicket victory over Jamaica. Sent in, Jamaica were dismissed for 166 in the penultimate over with Carlos Brown top scoring with 79 from 91 deliveries with four fours and sixes. In reply, Guyana reached the target in the 36th over with Sachin Singh stroking 32, Kevin St. Clair getting 31, not out, and Yadra and Kelvin Anderson getting 25 apiece. Now, in the other game at Zion Hill, Leeward Islands made light work of Canada, bowling them out for 59 and then strolling to their target to win by eight wickets. The fourth round bowls off on Thursday. Trinidad Tobago's goal shoot Samantha Wallace will play at least another two years with the New South Wales Swifts in the Australian Suncor Super Netball competition. The 24-year-old TNT international who joined the club in 2017 after being spotted in the 2015 Netball World Cup recently resigned with a two-year deal with the club. And we'll hear more about that story in our major newscast at 6.30. That's Caribbean in 10. Good afternoon.